Thank you, Kat and Ben. So I, Tom, my husband and I get to do the activity groups. And um, one of the things we need to realize is this whole conference, and I think Pastor Sheldon said it to us earlier, on a Sunday, we'll get about 1,500 people here. And I've done this. I'll walk up to somebody, hey, my name is Marcia. Glad to meet you. How long have you been coming? And they'll say 10 years. Oh, yeah, nice to meet you. So the connecting groups are actually to help us connect. It's to help the large church become small. And I actually am going to ask a friend of Tom's and mine to come up to share some because he had lunch with us the other day, and he shared a story. And I, I sat there and said, um, Mark, you got to share that. So if Mark could come up. And I got to say this to you guys. A lot of people think I don't have compassion. <laughs> and they think I don't have grace. And when you see Mark and that I can overcome his taste and be his friend, you will understand that I am compassionate because the man is a Cowboys fan. <laughs> so, you know, well, I, uh... <laughs> so Mark, could you come and share what you shared with um, Tracy and I at lunch the other week? And this is Mark, and he's been here about two years? Three. 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 Okay. Okay, he's on Tom's... Um, Hey, you guys. Where I come from, we just say howdy. Um, yeah, I can totally uh, admit the fear factor when I first came to this church because it was, as you can see, it's a huge campus. And then when I first came up here, I think they were doing a Christmas production. It's when I first came up to the church. So this place was loaded with people that I didn't know. So the huge fear factor kicked into me and I'm just like, I don't know a soul, but I felt right at home. You catch? I mean, it's like you come home, but you don't know anybody. Um, excuse me while I sit down. <laughs> um, but anyway, this was a coming home for me because a lot of y'all don't know me. Um, I came from, um, I came back from the ashes I'm starting to come up and uh, just uh, really starting to blossom now. I can't explain the feeling that I have to say this is my church home. Uh, my family's thousands of miles away back in Dallas, but I can truly honestly say that when I come up here on Sundays, Wednesdays, or whatever, Tuesdays, that I still can say I'm, I'm coming home. And it took someone to lead me home. And so when I was going through my issues with alcohol, um, I met somebody, y'all might know him, um, Herb Alvarez. Uh, he was real instrumental in bringing me here. But when I got here, then I met two instrumental people that uh, I can gladly say they're friends, and that's Tom and Marsha Krieger. From there, the, the relationships blossom. Now, if I start turning like multiple shades of red, don't worry. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not, I'm not, um, you know, sunburnt. It's You're just, a secret I turn 49er red. fan. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the dream alive, Pastor Marshall. <laughs> um, but yes, it's, it's been a lot of years. It's been a lot of growing. And I can honestly say now that I have no problem in sharing with others what the Lord's been doing in my life. And so with that in mind, um, I've gone from people I don't know to a room full of people I just love from the bottom of my heart. So, thanks. Thank you, Mark. And what he shared at lunch that I really wanted to say is, he talked about being afraid and not knowing anybody. And he said, you know, when I came, everybody was in their cliques. And I went, <gasps> You know, I, I, don't, I don't like that word. We don't have cliques at this church. But the truth is, we do have cliques at this church. Um, we have our people that we're comfortable sitting with. When I, you know, not me, but you guys. No, I'm joking. <laughs> My husband. No, when, but when we come to church, you know, we're comfortable with certain people. And we'll sit down with this person for breakfast. And we'll sit and talk. And then somebody new comes in and they look and they oh, how do I belong? Where, where, where do I fit? And that's some of the things that people um, wrestle with. And that's the heart of our connection groups. We want to get face-to-face -face with people. We want to get face-to-face -face with others, and especially those who are far from God. 
Um, one of the ways that we'll do that here is through the activity groups. And I like them because they're easy. They're like the access point. Like Pastor Sheldon said, somebody will not, may not come if you say, hey, we have a Bible study at my house. And they go, yeah, good. See you next week. Right? But you say, hey, I'm going to go hiking. We're going to go, um, I found this path, and we're going to go take it, and I got a bunch of friends coming, and you, what do you think of that? And I, I'm in. I'm all for it. Let's, let's go do that. It's the simplest way to connect because it's something that we're already doing. Some of us, how many people play basketball each week? Right? Okay. How many of us play, they, they go golfing, or they go movies, or they're surfing, or um, I go to Starbucks daily. You know, <laughs> you know, there's something we're already doing, and you invite someone to be part of your life, and that's what sets it apart. It makes it different from doing a Bible study. It makes it different from doing a devotional group. It's what we're already doing. But here's the catch. An activity group that we would be doing would be not just for the sake of doing the activity. In other words, I'm not going to invite someone to go to Starbucks with me simply to go drink chai tea. I don't drink coffee, by the way. Everybody thinks I'm a coffee drinker. I'm not. I drink chai tea. But I don't invite you to just drink chai tea with me. I want to get face to face with you. I want to get heart to heart. Let's talk. Let's find out what's in common. Let's find out what's going on in your life. And then from that, you'll say, you know what? I have some friends that like to drink coffee. And they think they're coming just for coffee. They think they're coming just for Starbucks. But the heart is to reach those who are far from God, one relationship at a time. The goal is to accomplish the Great Commission. It's to go and baptize and make disciples of all nations. So simply stated, we're to reach those who are far from God, one relationship at a time. And let's be honest, sometimes our friends and family, they don't understand it. They're like, are you going to church again? Weren't you just up there on Sunday? Why you got to go on Wednesday? What do you mean they got this activity you're going to go to on Thursday? What is wrong with you? Are you holy or something? But they get around your friends. You go hiking with them. You go to the beach, and they're with your friends, and they're like, okay, that's good. I can do that. I'm comfortable with that. It's your access point. And your friends become comfortable with your church family. And then from that, it's like, you know, we're all going to go to a um, Christmas program at the church. You want to come? Yeah. Because they're comfortable with you. They're not coming to a building. They're not coming to a church. They're coming to an activity that they've already been doing with you anyways here. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get this story straight, but um, a friend of mine was say, telling me about her husband, and he and a bunch of friends, I think they were casting. And I'm not a fish casting club. Okay, I'm not a fisherman. So there, and I see no point in doing this. But they saw a point in doing this, and so they're out there, and they're doing their casting. But from that and all the things that go along with that, he invited them, I think it was to the Christmas program, and they came. And they were not connected with this church before that. And that's the heart and the goal of our um, activity groups. And there's others. Um, it's not just fun. There's actually work involved. Yeah, so it's not just the activity. The activity is a bridge to reach somebody. We do a lot of things up here at the church, and I've been told I have a lot of small activity groups. Um, take Mark, for example. I got to first meet him about three, four years ago, and I got to ask, I get to ask a lot of questions of interest of his, not mine, um, to bring out who he is so I know how to be a brother to him. And one of the first projects that we worked together was setting up tents for um, crossover down at um, Hapuna Beach. We have a lot of time traveling together, going back and forth, getting materials, supplies together. I got to know him rather well. Um, and today he can speak into my life because I know he um, has my best interest at heart. I get to speak into his life and iron sharpens iron. And this is out of a small group. There's other brothers in that group, Zach, um, Ben, and a few others. And we all get to speak into our lives from this activity group of setting up tents and just doing things. 
it expanded to Bible study and going through the daily reading of the bookmark. Um, and we got to grow. We got to speak into each other's lives in a way that's not, oh, First John 2 says this, or scriptures. We got to speak our own life story of what God is doing to each other and hold us each other accountable to those things. Um, Mark and I are very opposite. I like to work with my hands, use hand tools, build things. Mark is from a background that when he swung a hammer, I could tell he didn't swing a hammer. <laughs> um, when you work on a job site, you don't waste your movement from point A to from point A to point B. You pick up things, you put it together, then you're going back, you see what needs to go back again. He would make 20 trips where I would make three. <laughs> but when I first started out on this other project years and years ago, I was on a job site where the guy asked me, oh, go cut that two by six by 18 in half. So I proceeded to go t cut that piece of two by six in half. But what was not communicated to me was how to cut it in half. I cut that two by 16, I mean two by six by 16, and that's 16 feet long board, a two by six in di dimensions, okay? I cut it lengthwise in half. <laughs> the guy, you know, and he wanted it two eight foot pieces. He got two 16 foot pieces, that was two by three. <laughs> so I can sympathize with Mark. We could, I could build this bridge with him. I had experience. He did not. This is where we get to touch a lot of things. Um, and I didn't get ridiculed. I didn't get teased. I got corrected. But, and then when I, the other guys did come along to jab me on the side or whatever, my friend backed me up. You know, but communicating and having the love for each other in these groups is essential. Um, another another um, activity group is a garden ministry. There's a man named Stu that helps tremendously. He has small groups in there, and they love each other. They encourage each other. They hold each other accountable. Often I will go out there just to talk to them because I come back so filled and, and encouraged that there will be a reason for me to go out there to... Um, put on the side the hardships that I've had for the moment, for that morning or for that day, and I get encouraged and come back because they're willing to face, put me in the right direction, face me to looking at Jesus again. And these guys, they, they talk about their, um, their life stories of their um, success and their failures, where they got hurt. Because most of these guys are older than me. They got wisdom beyond what I have. But they're willing to open up and share the hurt or the failure as well as the success of the love of Christ. And they're not the kind of guys that come here and quote scripture. They're not the kind of guys that um, go into a deep theological discussion with you. But you know they're Bible-based in, in their lifestyle. You see the fruits. We talked about the fruits earlier. You see the fruits of their life, of Jesus being in it, and you trust the input in you. And you get to measure it up against the word of God that you have and you come back encouraged and lifted up. Anything you want to add to that? Or? No, but I can say this. Um, one whenever he's gone to people to be pointed back to Jesus, it's never been because of me. Um, that's one. But, um, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Her chai drink that she likes, that's not coffee, six dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I've seen the depths of his relationships. Um, these are guys that he would, um, he, they would die for him. And it started from cutting wood together, from mowing the lawn together, from putting the tents up together. Um, I've watched 
his friendships grow. And it is, like I said, it's been an access point, a connecting point for each one, for my husband, but also for each one of the guys that he's connected with. And then through that, like with Ben, I've gotten to know his wife. You know, and that's been a blessing to me. And all of this comes from something as simple as an activity group. And nobody would ever think of that as being a way to connect with somebody. But it's the first step. It's for you first start being connected. Um, the way you would do that is face to face, like Pastor Sheldon was talking. You know, it's easy for me to invite certain people to go to the movies with me because I know them. But I need to break out of my comfort zone and invite others. That's what God's called us to do. We're not at this church just to come hear the word and go home. We're at this church to go and be the body of Christ. We're at this church to be the body of Christ here, but also outside. And the way to do that is you start, you just talk. And like my husband's really good at, he's good at talking to people and pulling oh. things out of them. Can I interrupt for a second? <laughs> we got to talk about this when we go home. Nah, nah, okay. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> The talking part, connecting part. Uh, an example that I can most recently is before we actually got started today, I met two new people that I never met. Their name was Mark and John. Um, I don't know if they, they're in here somewhere, but Mark, he helps run a family business, taxi driving. And I don't know how long he's been coming here, but it's the first time I met him. And when I was talking to him, I could feel the Holy Spirit or I don't know if the Holy Spirit, but something in me saying, hey, he could help Lance in the office. There's a, there's a connection group that can go on where he can help Lance in the office with our van ministry. And now I don't know if um, Mark is up for that or not, but the next time I, I, hit, I hit him up, I am going to ask him. <laughs> and then John, um, just through conversations, found out that he went to Christ Lutheran Montessori School where Marsha worked, and he, she knows his mother, right? I do. Yes. Um, but these are questions that I ask that are not about me, but about them, to bring them out, to get them to bridge to me. Because I made the connection, but I need that communication back. And these are two great guys that I look for now when I come here. So that's how you start with conversation. Then you find your co what's in common. Now, um, actually, some of you already know I like to go to Starbucks. Some of you know I love football. Um, I can actually have a, I know, poor thing you, Mark. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, but you start off with those things. And then once you find what's in common, then it's easy to say, hey, we're going to do this. Would you like to join us? That's your connection. And it's easy for them to say, yeah. Um, I found out there's some people that like to go to the movie. Great. You know what? I'm going to go see this movie. Now, I've got to say something about movies. Um, let's be wise with that. Um, and for me, there are certain movies I will invite people to. Other movies, I'm, I'm not going to go to. And so if they say, hey, what do you think of this movie? I don't want to put anything down. But at the same time, for me, you know, if I'm going to watch a movie and sit like this all the way through, that's a waste of good money. <laughs> so, so, you know, let's be wise about what we invite them to also, okay? Um, but that's how you start your activity group. It's organic. It's going to be living and breathing. Um, it's not going to be an, um, a piece of paper. It's going to be heart-to-heart, face-to-face relationship. And that's the first connection. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, a lot of times these things, I think Mark and I worked together on many projects before we got into another group. But, um, and with Zach. Zach is another brother that um, we did projects together, then we pulled each other in to do to, to, to Bible study. Uh, ben is another brother that, um, he questions me a lot in my life. Um, he comes to me for help, but I always leave um, encouraged or growing up a little bit more because of experiences. Um, but like the movies, um, surfing, um, and things, we get to just rub shoulders together and be real. Um, I'm not the best guy at quoting scripture, but I can tell you stories about the Bible. 
um, when I hear the, the disciples talk in the Bible and I read and I hear them talk to me, I don't see them quoting scripture back to me. I don't think I saw Moses quote the scripture back. But I hear them say, the Bible says, the word says. And, and I'm better at that than I am trying to quote scripture. Not to say I'm dumb, but I'm just not as sharp as some others when it comes to quoting scripture. So with that, um, that's activity groups. It's the first access point. Um, it's the easy one because it, your friends who are far from God are more ready for that. And that's where the first connection is made. Okay? Any questions? Oh, we're good. No questions. How's that? <laughs> yes, I do. Do we have any activity groups already lined up for people to sign up today if they wanted to? Actually, if you're a woman, the women's ministry actually has an um, uh, activity coming up. We are going to do the um, American Heart Association Heart Walk. Thank you for reminding me. In March. So um, we'll be doing that. Um, we'll have, actually, you can sign up um, online. Or I'll have some, I'm usually around at the information center area. I kind of try to stay around there so I can meet new people. You can sign up with me. Um, Heidi will be around. Um, Helene is around here somewhere, right there. So we'll have the information. Um, sign up, come walk with us. They had a lot of fun last year. I didn't get to go because I, I thought I could jog and then found out I shouldn't. So I'll, I'll make it this year. Okay. Um, Hi. Right there. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Pastor Rasha. So for these activity groups, um, are we supposed to be informing the church when we're going to be having them, or how do we start them? How do we, like, if I want to start a walking group or something, um, how would I let people know about that? Through Facebook, or you guys tell them? Both ways. Um, oh. Go face-to-face, -face, you know, um, people that you know. You could put it on Facebook. Um, we were talking about all kinds of different ways that we could do it, and I think we decided that for now we would be organic. Am I right? Um, it would be more of your um, word of mouth, face-to-face -face kind of thing. So you might tell me, and I know somebody that you don't know, but I know that person likes to walk. So we'll connect that way. Okay, um, so it'll be through people. Yeah. Okay. For now. Yes. Anything? Hello. Hello. Hi. I was wondering, is there going to be, like, if you decide to create a activities group, is there something where we can link up with uh, Hilo New Hope Church, like, website, where other people who are looking for something similar, they, they can register that way? I, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Like, with, is there, like, an active, like, if you create your own activities group or there's other existing ones, can you find that on the New Hope website? Or something where if we create one, we can do it that way so we can f have other people network. We would like to do that eventually. Um, you might be the person who does it. Um, we have a saying here, if you see the problem and you bring it up, you're probably the solution. <laughs> and I, so what's your name? Austin? Austin. And I'm not making fun, but um, I think it's something we tried a while back and we weren't equipped to make it work. Um, but if that's something you're good at, then we can meet. We'd love to do it. Um, we've been thinking about how we can do this. Um, we've experimented with different things. Um, that's a great question, and I would love to get with you and see how we can um, put that together. And then also, you can also connect with the office or get a hold of myself if it's a project kind of thing where you want to get a group of people to use as a connection thing. And we can funnel. There's multiple ways of funneling resources and uh, teaming people up together. Tom, I know we're going to go into break because I see yeah, Kat I see and them. Ben creeping up. Uh, just, I think this is going to be the last one. And Kosh, can we get you after? Uh, oh, we can write it down also. But um, You can write it down on the cards. If you have any more questions, you can write it down on yeah. the cards. Yeah. With the, um, the internet one, uh, we tried to do Twitter. We did Facebook. We did um, the web page. So we did a test run to see how that would work. What we found out is everyone... Um, everyone connects in their special way. Not everybody will do internet. We can set something like that up. What we didn't want activities, activity groups to turn into was scheduled things. 
because it's mostly spur of the moment. You're going to go to the beach tomorrow. And what, what the organizational part of it would do is hinder you connecting with people because if you have to let us know, then we have to put it on the internet and then, you know, did we drop the ball? Did the time change, location change? You know, those things will happen. So if there's a way to do something uh, internet-wise and be, you know, up to date with it and it changes that quick, boy, that would be awesome if you could think of something like that. So I think what Pastor Marsha was saying is if we can do something with internet, but it can be live, that would probably be the best way. And I know you, you guys have answers. Christy is like beaming from ear to ear with a smile uh, that we probably have a solution. Do we have time? Are we going to break? What are we doing? Okay, can we, can we talk after Glenn and Christy? And <laughs> I know, there's so much ideas and we're so short on time, which we will have another connecting conference in the future where hopefully, can I even say this? Can we, like... No, no. Go ahead. Uh, we, yeah, we, we, Go might, ahead. we might, we might, we might, we're shooting for two of these a year and then other ones. Where's Pastor Lynn? We're going to share that, right? About the quarterly ones. Okay, so we'll share that later. Anyway. Are we going to go on break? Yeah. Okay. So I want to give a hand for down. Pastor Marsha and Uncle Tom. Thank you. <clears throat> I saw Mark come up with his Cowboys jersey, so I uh, figured I'd represent Denver. He was like, uh, I need my jersey. He's going to connect right now with some people. Yeah. But you see, and that's not with the, others. <laughs> you see, that's the beauty of connecting is that something as simple as football, you, you know, Many of us, we know that the Super Bowl is coming up in just, you know, a week or two. And uh, that could be one. You can actually invite people, hey, you know, you wanna, you're going to watch the game? Yeah, we can watch the game. We can check it out. And from that, you build a relationship. And bottom line, connecting groups is all about life on life, heart to heart. Right? And you must always remember to bring God into your home. Because when somebody shows up at your home with the opposite team's jersey... You got to remember that they are a child of God and love on them anyway. So always bring God into your connecting groups, activity groups, anything yeah. like that.